All right, welcome back to episode two of season 18 of the Built On Air podcast. Good to be back with everybody. We've got Camille and myself and joined by Hugo from WP Connect. Welcome, Hugo. Glad to have you on. Thank you. We may, we may be joined by uh, Stefan from WP Connect as well. He's dealing with some, some internet connectivity issues, so hopefully he'll join us here in a second. And uh, Ali couldn't make it this week. She was returning from the eclipse yesterday and uh, stuck in a place without internet. So she'll be back next time. But I'll walk through what we're going to be talking about. It's always an hour-long show. We go through different um, items. We always start with our round the bases, get you up to date on everything Airtable related and all the communities of what people are talking about. Then we'll do a quick shout out to our sponsor, Air. And then we'll learn about um, both Hugo and Stefan and their background and how they got into this world. And then we'll turn it over to them to showcase their app called WP Connect and how it works with Airtable. And then um, talk about our community, how you can join and participate. And then finally, Camille's gonna walk us through a base on multi-question voting. <clears throat> so with that, with our round the bases, a few um, interesting updates. This will be the uh, Russell show for a bit. Russell's been active this week, showcasing a couple of cool things. Um, so he first talks about uh, how he built a, a webhook based web analytics inside of Airtable using a JavaScript to a webhook to then update an Airtable record. So. Just a little bit of JavaScript knowledge, you could build your own Google Analytics replacement inside of Airtable. It's kind of cool. We'll have to have, I think Russell's coming on. Maybe he'll showcase this in a future mm -hmm. episode. <clears throat> he also um, talked about a, a feature that we, I don't think we've mentioned in the past, um, where on a button you, that now has visibility where you can actually hide the button um if it doesn't meet certain conditions or if it does meet certain conditions and so buttons and it's probably there's 20 different types of buttons so i don't know <laughs> which buttons this applies to um as okay. far as i'm aware this is for newer detail pages um buttons that are um you know at the very top of the detailed page or on individual groups um but yeah, it, it's really useful for if you had a button that had the action was say, update the record and the update is say, mark as paid. Well, you don't really wanna click the button again if it's already marked as paid. So the conditional visibility now lets you say, hide this if it's already paid. And so it's little things like that that kind of clean up your interface and make sure that people don't uh, repeat the same process twice or, you know, do something before uh, they're supposed to do it because it doesn't meet certain criteria. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like now they have uh, groupings that have visibility, but this is at the, at the button specific level. So. Yes. So you can hide individual fields, you can hide whole groups, and now you can hide buttons conditionally. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. That is good. Welcome, Stefan. Are you with us? Sorry. Hello. Uh, no, you're good. We can hear you now. So you're good. <laughs> I had to re to reboot the whole thing. But, well, my, yeah. my, uh, my camera didn't work. Uh, and, and just after it, it was the the the, the, the microphone. Well, <laughs> you're good. You're good. A little okay. bit complicated, through, but it's the... okay the the news and then we'll we'll get uh learn more about you in a second so no problem thank you <laughs> all right one more from from russell um using a roll up on a percentage field with color conditions will pre-fill the colors the same as the source field i don't think i knew about this feature so that's no, kind of cool i i don't often apply different colors to this is really only relevant i think to percentage fields when you have um you know a specific color applied to certain percentages i normally just leave it as green all the time and so i never would have noticed this so pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that is cool nice little 
pack there. <clears throat> All right, I think that's the last from, from Russell. This one from Jan. <clears throat> Default options for a date field. So default to current date. This is actually really cool. Um, and it it's not listed in their what's new section. Well, of course not, Dan. That thing's not <laughs> updated. Uh, but yeah, so the, quietly and very recently, they've updated the default options for a couple of different fields like checkboxes. You can now default to checked. Um, but to Jan's point, you can default to current date. Previously, this is something you could do on a form where the form would be pre-filled with the current date, but this is now a global default setting, much like a single select and single line text. And now multi-select, you can also do a default applied to it. So they're adding more and more defaults, which is nice to see. Yeah. <clears throat> And I wonder, it looks like it's, I haven't tested this. If, the, if Is that clickable where you can maybe set it to like a static date? I will check in the background. Let's see. Let's see if Scott. Nope. It's just default to current date. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it does then... appear clickable. So I don't know if that might be a future intention they have to that as a functionality but right now it seems like you can only default to whatever the you know the date is yeah, yeah, yeah okay this one from scott this is from fill out talking showing how they do their defaults you know a bit more advanced um so saying maybe Airtable will do that <clears throat> all right so that is a cool feature that will come in handy <clears throat> Okay, here's one I found this morning. I was looking through the what's new to see if anything was added. There's nothing in April, but I'm 99% sure this top one here was not there a week ago. And we could, we didn't talk about it, it last week. I don't know if it was there a week ago, but it was, it was pointed out, yeah. I think, in our Slack community. I think that's where I first saw it. And they updated the help article about it but didn't otherwise make a big fanfare, which was surprising because this is one of the most asked for features is to create or delete a record from a downstream base. There are many caveats. Uh, I have done a little bit of testing for this feature, but it is very useful. If you have a pretty simple sync from A to B, in base B, you can create a new record and you can delete that record. The deleted record shows up in the deletion history in both the original base and in the downstream base, and you can restore from either base. That is very nice because hmm. originally I thought it would be only in the base in which you deleted it or only in the source base. It does appear in both of the trash histories, So that's great for traceability. Um, and, and when you restore it, it restores on both. Really yes. Yeah. Um, just like with editing a synced record, it seems pretty, it's pretty quick. There's not a lot of uh, delay that I noticed um, between creating it in one base and seeing it appear or disappear in the other. Um, there are, there's like a lot of little gotchas, I think, for, especially if you are linking records together, you're going to come into some issue. And if you're synced base, uh, is based on a filter. Um, you got to make sure that it matches those filter conditions. Otherwise, I don't know where the record goes. <laughs> it, it, might, it might get stuck or trapped. So, um, yeah, there's some gotchas, uh, but th it's very, it's uh, very encouraging. Yeah, yeah. No, that that is really <clears throat> useful. <clears throat> but on that note, let me see if this is the right one. I'm going to skip. Here we go. On that note of synced tables. Uh, Sam in the built-on air community says, I learned the hard way that if you're dependent on reliable and live data, you should not use Airtable sync. The sync times can be very fast at times, but other times it can be very slow. So there's a good conversation on some issues people have with, with sync tables. So definitely is not perfect. Sometimes it does go to sleep where they don't sync. And so you do have to kind of be aware. You can nudge it. If you make some changes, it might wake it up. 
Yeah, this is for um, like, I don't know what Airtable would call it in terms of their own terminology, if it's a dormant base or if the base is sleeping or whatever they call it. But if you have a base that just sort of sits there and no one goes in and edits, um, they they will not sync at the same frequency as a as a active base where people are in it all the time and there's changes being made and etc. So not entirely reliable um, to have you know completely rely on the regular sync refresh rate, um, especially if you're if it's not a very active base. Yeah. So yeah, just be aware there is still some some nuance to that. <clears throat> All right. Here's a weird issue with email. Um, Joseph in the built on air community has an email template that doesn't have anyone in the CC, but when it gets sent, it puts the person's email address that is in the two line also in the CC line. I'm BCCing myself on the emails and I'm wondering if it's related to that, it's just weird. I've never seen it before. And I BCC myself on a lot of automation emails, never seen this issue. So there it shows um, the two going here, and then it shows up as a CC. So there's discussion there. And this is, this is an email from Airtable itself. Mm -hmm. So I read through this one before, up until about when Scott started replying, and the apparently the response from Airtable is that this is intended behavior um, done for some compliance reasons, where if you were to have multiple people that are in the two or CC line, the reason why you appear in both is yada yada compliance reasons, and you can read the full response on the built on air Slack community, but it sounds like they kind of, this was their way around, um, you know, being compliant with some uh, messaging uh, rules and laws and whatnot. And um, I think one of the concerns from this thread is um, I don't want to receive the same email twice. Your email provider should not be sending you multiple emails. If you're in the two CC and BCC line, that's just an that's an email thing. You should only receive one with the caveat of if you're in like a group email um, and you are personally added to the two line, then you will receive two emails. But that's not what's happening here. Yeah. And I and I believe this was confirmed later that it doesn't send a duplicate. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So yeah, there there has been changes. I think um I think we talked about it. Maybe we didn't talk about that. They now have the ability to um, remove yourself from from an email thread, and um, so it now adds an email, a link at the bottom where you can where you can you know remove yourself. And I have we done testing on that? Like that removes you from that automation. Any future emails from that automation or that base? I think I I haven't tested yet. Um... I could see this being tricky to resolve from Airtable standpoint because one base might have 30 different email digest things. Mm -hmm. And if you only want to unsubscribe to one, well, that might be a feature that you have to bake in yourself. Uh, but I don't know how you uh, get around Airtable's default unsubscribe feature because they have to have one for, again, compliance reasons. So, you know, at some yeah. point, if you're anticipating people unsubscribing and you have multiple campaigns, this is one of those instances where perhaps you should be using a different email system yeah. that's sort of purpose built for this so that you have more control over what they're unsubscribing to. Yeah. But definitely Airtable has been making modifications. It looks like they're trying to get compliant and uh, this, this might be part of that as well. <laughs> All right, move on. Um, here's, uh, an interview. If you like to hear interviews with, uh, Airtable executives, here's one on Tech Talks Daily with, let's see, it's with, uh, Anthony Maggio, who is the head of product management at Airtable. So we'll provide a link to that. If you like listening, I, I cannot say that I've listened to this yet, so not sure on the quality, but always like to hear what, what people at Airtable have to say about the product and future roadmap. 
Okay, here's an interesting one. Um, so this is this is a post from Airtable talking about AWS, Amazon using Airtable internally. The quote from AWS is Airtable has enabled AWS to quickly build the front end and back ends of internal applications, which are now integrated with generative AI, no code or engineering resources necessary. So that's a pretty good, the reason why I thought this was interesting was um, AWS had a product, it was called Honeycomb, that was somewhat competitive to Airtable, it was kind of like a, a, a low code, no code app builder. They sunsetted that a few months ago, if I if I remember correctly. And so it's just interesting that they were using Airtable to build their internal tools and not and not their own product. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that's a good that's a good uh, testimonial there from from AWS, as Chris Dancy says. So, all right, um, actually. It's a good time. I'll do that at the end. We'll make an announcement on that. Okay, this one's coming from LinkedIn. This is from Jimmy, who was on the show last week. Um, been trying to write an Airtable formula for two years that I could never figure out. Found some helpful stuff in the community and their support was good, but I still couldn't get it to work for my use case. Then Eric told me to ask ChatGPT to write the formula and it worked. Now, I would say well, probably what you're thinking is... Airtable now has built-in AI for writing your formulas that you don't even need to go to ChatGPT. Well, I was going to say, what was the formula? Because yeah, that's know. true. I like he to did. think I'm quite good at Airtable formulas. Maybe I could have done it. <laughs> yep. That's I true. don't need your stinking AI. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's it, it's amazing. Like that functionality for I haven't done the ton, I haven't been doing a ton of formulas lately, but. Um, just I know how complex formulas can get and and if AI can help. But you also got to be careful. You got to know that what AI came up with is what you're trying to do. I in in this case, um, I would prefer using Airtable's built-in formula uh generator uh that appears at the bottom of a, a formula field, just because it is presumably well trained on Airtable yeah. formula yeah. syntax and all of the you know, how to actually write one in Airtable rather than chat GPT, which may or may not have good training on how to write formulas specifically for Airtable. I suspect it's quite good at Excel formulas, but Excel formulas are inherently different from Airtables. And so, but if it worked for Jimmy, it worked. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I do know in the past, I remember like it would use functions that didn't exist inside of Airtable and things mm -hmm. like that. So. All right, a few more. These are from the Airtable community. Um, this is kind of a, a request I thought was interesting. This was more towards enterprise users, um, enterprise admins, um, asking for better support for the SAML SCIM integration to be able to automatically link a user to a seat type so an editor or a, or a viewer. a viewer yeah based off of some kind of mapping um so it doesn't currently do that so you can't it does have single sign-on but it doesn't if it if a new user comes in it probably defaults to just one use type or something I believe I could be incorrect but I believe what happens is the manner in which you're invited to um, the enterprise org unit, it determines what seat type you have. So if your first invite is like, be an editor on this interface, you'll come in as an editor. Otherwise, you'll come in as a viewer. That could be wrong, but I think that's what happens. But I agree, this would be pretty useful if you happen to have an attribute that's passed through your single sign-on or other, um, you know, authentication uh, I mean, that would be great if you could just pre-fill it yourself if you happen to already know. Yep, yep. So that's useful. And last one. Um, this is kind of a long discussion. Interface share permissions to be set independently of base permissions. Um, Scott answers this, but not exactly the way that what he was intending, the original question. But I thought what Scott brought up was a good reminder of understanding when you're sharing at the base level versus the interface level, those are different and can be confusing. So um, be aware if you want 
people to only have access to the interface, you have to share from the interface. If you share from the base or the workspace level, then it will have um, access to the data layer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good reminder, although that wasn't what they were asking. They were asking for just being able to publicly share an interface um, where anybody could use it without having to log in, which currently is not available, except for the forms. Yes, which is getting increasingly confusing. Before it was fine, um, forms being you know, publicly shareable and interfaces not because they were entirely separate concepts and, you know, pieces of the product. But now the new form builder is only accessible via the interfaces, you know, three tab. Uh, if you go under interfaces, that's where the new form builder is. And those new forms can be publicly accessible, but the rest of interfaces can't. And so um, my hope is that eventually interfaces will be We'll have a toggle for publicly accessible, probably in view only. I mean, I don't suspect they would give you edit capability because um, that's how they make their money, through licenses. But that's not a thing yet, uh, as explained in this post. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's catch up a, a couple chats we, we missed out on. Um, Alicia says, I'm excited about this, talking about the default um, dates. For my current time tracking, love being able to default it to current time. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a really powerful uh, feature. And then Frank talking about the the formula generator, uh, Airtable formula generator is also aware of other fields in your table, which is super helpful. That's a great point. So that another advantage to use the built-in one. Yeah. For AI. Okay. One quick announcement: If you haven't heard about Daretable, this is which this is number three, four. four if you count the online one, right? Well, I don't know. Four, Can five. I count? <laughs> is this three? I think this is three in person: Austin, okay. San Francisco, yes. New York. I think the, right. Remember? Yes, the original was all virtual. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so this is 3.5, Garrett says. Yeah, that's that's probably fair. So, And this will be in New York, October 25th. Um, and that's a Friday. And then I believe there's also networking and other activities on the Saturday. So kind of a day and a half of events. So excited for that. Um, limited tickets. So they're going to be 300, which I think is the most they've ever had. And um, so Chris Dancy and Ben Green are organizing this. Um, so tickets are on sale now and, um, I plan to be there. Camille, I think maybe we'll make the trip out. I will most likely be there. Okay. So it's great to lots of people, um, plan to, to join and participate. And so, yeah, so check that out. We may be able to, I'm talking to, or I need to talk to Ben, Ben and Chris, if you're listening, uh, hook us up at Built on Air to give us some discount coupon codes for our for our listeners so maybe we can help out with that <clears throat> friday saturday there we go october 25th and 26th and if you want to be a presenter as well you can you can um, apply to to be a speaker to that okay so that uh concludes everything going on in the Airtable world so let's move on to a quick shout out. If you are running your business in Airtable, make sure to back up your data outside of Airtable that follows best practices for data security um, and, and continuity. So Airtable backups is a great solution built directly around Airtable, understands Airtable and backs up your data as well as your schema information and all your attachments um, into Google Drive, Box or Dropbox. So check that out at ontoair.com. Use code built on air to get a uh, I believe five percent discount on that. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna now jump to our discussion, learn about Stefan and Hugo. We'll include both of you, learn a little bit about um, your backgrounds and what you've got going on. So I'm curious, give me a little history of yourselves and how you came into this world of, of Airtable. Okay, I begin. Uh, I, I, make, I make it quick because uh, I have 20 years of, uh, of, uh, of um, web uh, um, 
behind me. So uh, uh, I'm come from a web agency, um, web agency world. So uh, uh, I created uh, Digital Corner uh, five years ago, uh, seven years ago. Uh, so we are in France, in Nantes. Um, so we are specialized in website creation, uh, SEO, uh, web marketing, uh, web development, uh, basically. And um, in 2020, we we are spe specialized in WordPress area, to to be uh, to be precise. Uh, we 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 do other stuff, but really uh, uh, expertise in, uh, in in WordPress. And in 2020, we we include in our uh, in our offers uh, the no code uh, no code uh, uh, services. Uh, so uh, and in 2022, uh, we uh, we we built WP Connect, uh, who is the, the the studio design development and sales of uh, WordPress plugin to connect uh, no code uh, tools to uh, WordPress. Very I'm cool. wondering what the pipeline is from WordPress to no code in general, because I feel like. WordPress, I don't want to call it the original necessarily, but it is, it's it's a no code tool itself. And um, there's a lot that you okay. can learn from dealing with WordPress and its various limitations and apply that to other products as well. Uh, WordPress is a no code tool, of course. Yes, you're totally right. It is a low code tool as well. Uh, and it is a code tool. So uh, it is a framework now. This is more than CMS. So uh, WordPress is, is more like, a, yeah, as I say, a, a framework where you, you can uh, build some things with code, no code, et cetera, et cetera. And what we want to do here is uh, to uh, connect uh, more database no code tools uh, with uh, WordPress. Uh, so use the the, the the front end of WordPress and even the the, the, the admin panel of WordPress. Uh, once we have made the first sync uh, to from Airtable or Notion, because we have two plugins that uh, that we connect to uh, to WordPress in this this way, Airtable to WordPress and Notion to WordPress. Uh, we have also add-ons that send data to uh, what, uh, from WordPress to Airtable or Notion, uh, but basically for uh, for the 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 the, the, the RWP thing, the, the plugin that uh, we will uh, show show you, the idea was to um, uh, have an external database to handle some data uh, and not in the admin panel of WordPress. That can be, in some way, a little bit tricky to to use for some users. I had, a, I had a question. Actually, Hugo, if you want to give your background and, and what you're up to. Yeah, I'm a little bit long, uh, younger than Stefan, so it's going to be... <laughs> you're nice. <laughs> um, I've just uh, received my diploma from, uh, from my master's degree uh, in uh, web development in a in more full stack way. Um, and I'm uh, I'm working with Stefan uh, in the in the agency since uh, since two years and a half now. So it's been a, a long time. Uh, and so, uh, as Stefan said, um, uh, I've uh, I've got assist to, to the launch of uh, of WP Connect, uh, and uh, and I think that's it. My my major role is to be developer and project manager uh, in the in the web agency. We have the same entity um, for now. Uh, we hope that we, we, we will uh, uh, build a, a society, uh, WP Connect, on, on its own. But for, for now, uh, this is Digital Corner that handles um, the, the services, uh, web WordPress services, uh, digital strategy services, and uh, no code um, services, and the products. The, the products editing like uh, WP Connect. So the WP Connect is more like a, a brand mark uh, of, of Digital Corner. It's not a society. So um, 
it's it begins to to be a little bit complicated to have um, services and uh, products to uh, to manage to handle to organize but yeah we 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 managed to do that with um, a, a bunch of freelancers that uh, is um, around you around us yep yeah i I'm, I'm in the same boat as you i know the the complexities of managing both those my question mm. for you is is i'm curious about like everybody in the in the web world knows and likely has used wordpress what what do you think is the future of wordpress how how do you think how is, is is it still continuing to grow strong or is it losing momentum uh we hear a lot of things about wordpress especially in the no code community who is doesn't like wordpress uh so uh, it's uh, it's a bit funny to to hear that uh, wordpress is dead wordpress is dead i'm sorry no wordpress is not dead uh it's uh it's is it strong the, the truth is that um, um, there is a lot of uh, uh, tools now that, uh, that 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 didn't exist before, uh, like uh, to 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 design a website, like something like that, like Doric, like uh, Webflow, of course, yeah. Um, but um, I think that is good for WordPress. Um, WordPress, this is 45% uh, of the web, so this is like huge, as you know, um, and uh, the. The, the the market is not uh, is not uh, is not growing, but uh, it's it's um, how, how do you say that in in, in English? Wow. Yeah. It's not it's not uh, down as well. Um, so there is a lot of uh, of uh, of news in in WordPress. Uh, there will be the FSC. I don't know if you know the the FSC. This is the full site editing. So. Uh, you can man now you can manage totally your website in wordpress the header the content the footer uh, there's a lot of ai as well uh, with uh, uh, a b testing uh, on the, uh, with the, the the gutenberg blocks um, the, there is a ai in the page builder as well like elementor things like things like that um, there is a lot of uh, stuff that, uh, that that is coming, especially the the redesign of the the admin panel and the collaboration on the on the admin uh, things that uh, th there was not uh, they were not uh, till uh, till now. Hmm. Yeah, it is amazing. the The ecosystem around WordPress is just phenomenal. It's, it's so this is great. huge. This is yeah. uh, this is a little web. Uh, <laughs> it's inside the web. So uh, yeah. yeah. And there is a lot of uh, of uh, of, uh, of people that that uh, is using WordPress, but yeah, WordPress is a dinosaur. That, that's that's <laughs> for sure. Uh, Twenty years old, but mm -hmm. uh, it's still there. It's open source, and uh, it's, it's not to forget that it is open source. So um, uh, I'm gonna say that it it it, it will never 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 be. Uh, it it will ever exist because. Um, uh, the community is really, really, really strong and um, active. So, um, yeah. and, and it's good. It's good for uh, for for open source uh, tools. Yeah. And in the no code uh, ecosystem, uh, we I strongly believe that uh, the no code open source will uh, will be rising this uh, this year because uh, there is a lot of uh, of tools uh, no code uh, that is uh, that are really good. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let's uh let's move on. If you want to share your screen, yes, yeah, you go will talk about your product WP Connect. You're gonna share with us. Yeah, so WP Connect is the um, the, the 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 entity, the, the the brand mark, and what we're gonna show you is the the one of uh, the ten products that we have developed. So RWP Sync. Uh, Airtable to WordPress. We have another plugin that is called Notion WP Sync, who is connect Notion to WordPress. And we have some add-ons uh, that connect um, a Forms plugin uh, to Airtable and Notion. So we have Graffiti Form to Airtable, WP Form to Airtable, mm. Contact Form 7, Contact Form 7 to Airtable. Uh, we have free plugins and we have freemium plugins and uh, paid plugins. And RWP Sync is uh, one of one of the the, the plugin. 
it exists in three version, in free, free version, pro version, and pro plus version. Uh, and in two weeks, uh, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying uh, I'm saying it now. Uh, we will uh, release Eleventh um, uh, plugin, who is connecting WooCommerce with Airtable, oh. in both ways. Yeah. Uh, for now, RWP Sync is just one way because uh, we want to keep uh, a single source of truth philosophy. And for uh, the Air Wu thing, so the WooCommerce for Airtable, we 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 manage to include the both the, uh, both uh, both ways, both thing, both two way sync. Okay. So um, products products in Airtable to WooCommerce, and orders in WooCommerce to uh, Airtable. With with a uh, with the stock uh, regulation, of of course. I'm sure everyone knows, but in case they don't, WooCommerce is, uh, I believe, the most common e-commerce plugin for WordPress. So allowing you to have a storefront on your page to buy and sell things of some sort. So that's really cool that it could connect to Airtable to, as you say, automatically manage. Um, you know, what products are you selling and what's the stock of those items, et cetera. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will, um, we have, we have a, 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 a 15 year beta tester, uh, and uh, we will, uh, we will test the product with them in, uh, in 10 days. Yeah. So can you share with us how, how this air WP sync works? Yes. <laughs> yes. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay, so um, basically, how does it work? Um, just like uh, other plugins in in WordPress. So once you have uh, downloaded and uh, activated, uh, you have an interface here, um, and the, the 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 major feature, what is really important to understand uh, in this plugin is that uh, RWP Sync uh, is using the, the API of, uh, of Airtable um, to make this, the synchronization between WordPress and Airtable. Um, and uh, how does it work? Um, it's working thanks to uh, the connections. Uh, for the example, now I'm going to, to present a, a simple use case uh, with a, a job board. So um, in Airtable, I have uh, my database with uh, all of my uh, job, uh, of uh, all of uh, my uh, vacancies. Um, so I have a lot of information, job name, company, uh, the logo, the, the type, etc. Um, and what I want to, to do is to uh, synchronize all of this info in my, uh, in my WordPress. So for that, I have a connection. Um, there are four steps in a connection. First, the settings. As I said before, um, to communicate uh, between WordPress and Airtable, we need to, to use the, the API. So uh, for that, we have what we call a token and that we can find uh, in your um, Airtable accounts. Uh, once you're connected in your Airtable account, you have a space uh, called. Sorry, uh, just we had to change this part uh, when uh, they decide to to mm. to, uh, to to migrate from a, uh, API key to access mm. token. Yes, <laughs> I was going to ask which which path you went with, and yeah, access tokens. We, yeah. we 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 released the, the the first version of RWP Sync in August uh, 2022, and mm -hmm. uh, the free version, so with the API key, and uh, we wanted to release the pro version in January 20, 2023, and um, uh, Airtable uh, announced the the token in December, I think, 2022. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we had to stop the development and to integrate uh, in the, in the first version the the the, the access token because uh, we we do, we do, didn't want to uh, to change it in in 2023. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So so far. I, th I think they know uh, you go for the token. That's that's okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's. Uh, I think that's. Uh... 
for for now we are using the the token because the api is not uh, the api key is not supported by uh, by airtable yep. um so um once we have uh, created our token um we can put it in the in the connection and then uh i can say the, the, the connection is established uh, so um we have all of our bases um and one i once i've selected my bases so this one i can find my tables so the one i want to use is the job board and then i can select also the views uh, and filter by formula what is really important by these two features is that um the view uh i don't know maybe if, if i have another view with uh only a permanent contract i can create a view and only synchronize permanent contracts and i can also make it by the formula here mm -hmm. um we will add uh, the filters uh, in the uh, next uh, release uh, the filter and the filter group yeah. Uh, yeah it will be it will be easier for a uh, for for your user to filter to filter yeah. directly in the connection yeah that's very nice yeah, yeah mm -hmm. uh, as you said before in, in, uh, in all of your reviews uh, sometimes a formula as we can say that. Uh, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, I think it's, it was Jimmy uh, that was saying that uh, sometimes the formula could be a little bit tricky uh, on Airtable. So we are going to, to, to make it easier for all of our users. Um, so uh, the first step is where my data come from, then how can I import it uh, on WordPress? So uh, all the post type and all of the feature of WordPress. And then uh, coming the, the field mapping. So um for example my job name is going to be uh corresponding to the title of my job um and i make it uh for all the fields that i want to uh import in wordpress and finally i have my synchronized settings so uh i can select my strategy so add update and delete add update and just add it means that the the, the strategy add update and delete if i delete what uh on um, Airtable, it's going to be deleted on WordPress. And I can trigger manually recurring, so I can choose how often I want to, to, to be uh, uh, the, 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 the sync you make. And uh, also via webhook, uh, as, you, as you know in Airtable, you can uh, launch, a, a trigger a webhook uh, thanks to the scripts. So, once I have synchronized my uh, my posts, I have all the list here. That is the same uh, I have here. And then on the front end, so it means on the website that all the users can uh, can see. Um, I have all uh, the posts. So it means that I really can create uh, a job board, but you can imagine a lot a lot of use case uh, you can manage your blog on airtable uh, you can uh, manage everything if you have um... directories for example as well yes we, exactly. we have a lot of clients who who, who, who are running uh, directories websites yeah so it's easier for us to use airtable for example yeah mm -hmm. or e even events as well Yes, and in, uh, in uh, real estate, we have a lot of uh, real estate uh, clients that uh, that uh, on, uh, that run their business on uh, on Airtable. Yes, exactly. Um, and why they are using also that is because uh, once my uh, data is imported in WordPress, I can use it uh, as many ways. Uh, and um, for example. Now I'm using Elementor. Uh, Elementor is a, is a page builder on WordPress, mm -hmm. but it means that once your data is in the CMS, you can use it as you want. If you want to, to put it uh, in a single page, if I just want to use uh, this or that, um, I can select and pick exactly what I want. And that is really important uh, because uh, for my single page now, 
uh, I can display um, the salary, the, the, the type of the contract, and all of the informations that are uh, in, uh, in my air table. All of this info that I can see here have been imported into the WordPress. The difference uh, with the previous um, uh, plugin, I don't know if you, 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 you knew it, uh, AirPress. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the difference is that we import the content in WordPress. We do not call the data in Airtable. So we import and we synchronize. So we get better in the, for, for the performance. And uh, as Hugo say, uh, once the data is in WordPress, you can manipulate the the way you want in uh, for, for for to 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 display it in the on the front end. It's better for SEO as well, probably because it's you could be crawled by, you know, yeah. different search engines because it's in it's permanently there rather than only on page load. Yes, totally. Exactly. And, That's and, a good thing that you talked about SEO. Uh, <laughs> I think that's Stefan what I wanted to say is that the plugin supports 80% um, uh, of the SEO plugins, the major plugin of um, SEO on WordPress. So it means uh, SEO Press, Yoast SEO, uh, SEO Key, and um, uh, Rankmat and uh, All in One SEO. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a, a full compatibility with the, the four major uh, SEO plugins. So um, you can manage your SEO in Airtable and you can map uh, the meta, uh, Hugo will show you, I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the metadata, uh, the, the, the meta description, uh, the Facebook description, uh, the, meta, the meta title, the slug, you can, you can even uh, manage the slug uh, of your, your URL. Uh, you can, uh, the Twitter de description and, uh, of course, the meta description and the meta title. Uh, and this for Yoast, Erodin One, RankMath, and SEO Press, who are the four major SEO plugins. So you can have your content in Airtable and you can have your SEO uh, data, your SEO, uh, um, uh, uh, SEO content who is related to your content uh, in the same uh, table. Amazing. So while we're on this page, I just want to point out several things that I like about the setup. One, each connection seems like it could have its own access token. And with personal yeah. access tokens, you can define very specific scopes in Airtable. So only give it read and write access to this base for this token and give a, a different token to a different base. So full control over, you know, how much each of these imports sees. Um, I like the usability of drop downs of the base and table and view because you're reading the API to get that information rather than having someone put in the base ID and the table ID, just very mm -hmm. good for usability. And then Thanks I to love- the yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, so sorry. Thanks the to the metadata. metadata. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that you can import not just as posts, but other, um, what are they, te taxonomies in um, WordPress? Yeah, yeah taxonomies, so, totally, yeah. Mm. yeah. I love that. Um, and then different post types and defaults, and then the field mapping, which you just explained, which includes things like um, the metadata properties, not just like, uh, custom fields that you might add. So, um, yeah, I agree with Frank. Not having to constantly call Airtable is huge. Uh, this sounds great, and I do. I I'm what I call a survivor of WordPress. I used to use WordPress. I started in WordPress and no longer use it personally. But this makes it feel more vastly more usable. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 think so too, and. Uh, uh, thank you for your for your words, Kami. Um, we we what we we wanted to do is really we we listen to our, our users and uh, we uh, we obviously uh, had some functionalities with the with the the, the life of the the plugin. So the the, the plugin has uh, one year old now, uh, one one year and a half. So uh, uh, we are the version two. Um, so uh, we had uh, as well the possibility to create user. Uh, Hugo just show you. 
Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. we, you can create user in Airtable as well. So um, the, Amazing. You, 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 have, you have as well this, uh, this possibility. And you can also, if you want, create post type and create custom field as well uh, directly in the, in the plugin. So really, I think you have really full control on, uh, on, uh, on your uh, content management here. Yeah. It really is amazing because, you know, the, the platforms that took off, like Softer being one of the big ones, um, the main advantage it had was tying directly into Airtable so you could use Airtable as your back end. But now you have all the power of WordPress and all mm -hmm. the other plugins that you want to use, but still use because admittedly, like I'm, I'm along, I still use Airtable or WordPress for several of my sites. Um, but I hate going into the back end and it's <laughs> slow and it takes long for page loads to manage all the posts. So being able to do all that in Airtable and syncing it over is, is really a game changer of being able to manage all your content and everything in Airtable. Yeah, so, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, and especially with the, this, uh, this uh, new uh, no-code generation, uh, we, we strongly believe that uh, it was the, the, the right move uh, to, uh, to have the, the power of the two, uh, two words, mm -hmm. which, which are not two words uh, at the end, but uh, uh, were really complementary. So, uh, so we 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 work uh, we, for 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 that to uh, and we want to improve as well the 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 the, the UX uh, UI here because uh, uh, this is this is really the first version of uh, of the of of this admin uh, of the of the plugin for the WooCommerce we totally uh, redesigned the, the interface uh, it would be really uh, uh, more accessible and. Uh, beautiful and uh, um, easy easy to to uh, to have we have uh, ideas as well uh, of uh, like templates you know we 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 thought to we think to uh, to to make bundles for example uh, imagine you can uh, download uh, airtable template with the plugin and with the configuration already uh, already done uh, with a json file or xml file i, I don't know uh, that you can just in one click install uh, the, 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 the full uh, ecosystem. We think as well to maybe uh, have a front, uh, front end templates uh, with WordPress. Um, so you can, you, you, will, you, will, be, you will have the, the total um, control of uh, your front, uh, your, uh, your sync uh, tool, and you're back in uh, in her table so the possibility are uh, endless <laughs> yeah there's a lot we'll have to have you back on when maybe showcase woocommerce and mm -hmm. whatnot so exciting stuff thank you for for sharing stefan and, and hugo awesome thank you and they can find you w wpconnect.co is that correct yeah totally okay Thank you. Okay, let's move on quick. Um, if you're not in our Built on Air community learning about these amazing tools and all about Airtable, join us at builtonair.com. We have a very active Slack community of users. We'll give a quick shout out here. Some of the faces of, of the community. There's many more. There's thousands of people in there. So come join us at builtonair.com. We'd love to have you in. And with that, Camille is going to walk us through her base that she built for us all right. all right so as mentioned previously dare table is coming back again this year this time october and new york but last time there was a conference uh i had a session and one of the sessions was um, one of the things that i did in my sessions was uh, answer questions live and Chris Dancy, one of the organizers of Daretable, asked me, what do you do if you happen to be running a conference and you have this thing where people can vote on sessions or what have you, but you want to prevent someone from voting several times um, and in having their vote, like spamming the vote counter. So uh, I gave several answers. Many of the people who were present, um, Ali Alosa, our uh, co-host, um, 
I believe Jen Rudd had an answer. Cherry Yang had an answer. I feel like Lorenzo had an answer. A lot of the names and faces that you will see in the built on air uh, Slack community, everyone kind of had an idea. Of course, Kavan had um, answers as well. And so I decided since we are uh, going back to Dare Table, what would you do in order to get at that idea in practice? In the conference, I just sort of talked aloud how I thought one might do it. And here is a very quick rundown of what you could do, starting with the form itself. So you have a form where um, people fill it out and you have different categories. So one of the things that Chris was saying is that you can vote on multiple things. It's a full day conference. So there might be, I think there's different tracks. There might be three different tracks and what is the best session for each conference track might be how the form is structured. So I have uh, question one, category A, question two, category B. I've set this so you can only select one record for each category, it just makes splitting it up easier. Um, but I will go into how the base is structured and what's happening behind the scenes. So based on some of the answers from my uh, compatriots at the conference, we're starting off with a table of registrants. This is a conference, so you should know who's showing up beforehand because they will have purchased tickets. And so I just made a really quick checkbox for whether or not they've paid for their ticket. Uh, but I have everybody who should be coming to the conference. Um, in all of this is like test data from Airtable's templates, but I have Dan, myself, and Hugo, but I've added Hugo after Hugo already submitted the form and I'll explain why. Um, really simply, here are all of the things that could be voted on. These are just the different sessions of the conference. And here is the table that gets filled out when you submit a form. So um, all it really is is exactly what the form showed, category A, category B. Because I have the form set that you must be logged in to use it, I am capturing the email used. Um, and so it's uh, it's definitely that email that is submitting rather than having a free text email field, which you could also use. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's easier to fake it if you can type in your own email. So the first thing that happens when you submit a form, um, I have a uh, find record step that's checking my registration table to see is there a record where the email matches the created by email, which is filled in because I have that option selected on the form, and then check if they're paid. If there's exactly one registrant that has that email, and there hopefully should only be one person, so hopefully someone didn't register twice with the same email, and that they have paid, then go ahead and create a new record in a different table, one for each of your different questions. This is at the point where Personally, depending on how many questions you have uh, on this form, maybe you want to use a script to break it up. Uh, but in this demo, I only have two questions. So I'm just going to have two create record steps um, where I'm going to link to that voter, fill in what the category it is, uh, it is that they're voting on, and then what was their answer to that question. So uh, if I go into my votes table, I can see that my response was split out into two different records for category A and category B, and so was Dan's. Now I have this other field called value. And again, one of the things that Chris wanted was you should be able to resubmit your uh, form as many times as you want. However, we only want to count your most recent submission. So what happens is if someone were to go in and fill out the form again, Dan or Hugo, you can now do so if you would like. Um, but what would happen is that any previously submitted vote would be uh, canceled out. And by that, I just have an automation run and check. Um, are there any other submissions that happen to have the same uh, voter and the same category. 
So these are the conditions I used. Category is the same, voters the same, and the record ID is not the same. I don't want to count the new one that I just created. Um, for each of those old ones, go ahead and mark their value as zero. By doing that, that means that I can keep um, my most recent ones, but not my old ones. So you can see someone has gone in in the background and filled out that form again. And my older submission that was done earlier this morning was marked with a value of zero, but the one that just came in from Dan at 9 a.m. was taken. So Hugo did fill out the form originally and was not a, a registrant um, so their votes didn't get transferred over. And I realize that they weren't transferred over now. So I'm wondering, did I mark as paid? I didn't. So they did work the way I expected, which is great. Um, we are not counting Hugo's because we've said that he didn't pay for the conference. So um, in order for your votes to count, uh, you should be an active registrant or, or whatever. Um, and that is totally flexible to however you set up the base. You can have any conditions you want. If you just want to make sure that their email is there at all, that's fine too. Um, but the end result is that you should be able to have as many backlogged votes as you want, but keeping it with uh, only the most recent submissions. And then, of course, you could build a dashboard off of it. And I'm still only counting four valid votes and then uh, slap together dashboard. You could see what was the most voted on Um session for each category. It's pretty unexciting because we don't have that many people that filled it out, but hopefully you get the gist. Very cool. All right. So Chris will make sure this is available for this year's dare table. Awesome. Thank you, Camille, for sharing. Very cool solution for that. And that concludes today's episode. Thanks again, Stefan and Hugo for joining us. And Camille, as always, and we will Thanks see so much everybody. for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you.